In this video, we're going to outline what needs to be done in order to have a complete uh, proof of subsets, and we're going to give an example of doing such a proof. Before we get started, just like with anything, it's important to go over the definitions that we're going to be using quite heavily and the types of proofs that we encounter. So I just want to remind you what it is, what it means for one set to be a subset of another, and what it means for two sets to be equal to one another. So let's begin with the definition of a subset. So let's suppose that A and B are sets. Then we say that A is a subset of B. If whenever X happens to be an element of A, then it's also an element of B. And that has to be true for all of the elements of the set A. They all must be elements of the set B. But notice how we can state this as an if-then statement. If X is in A, then X is in B. Uh, this is going to help us follow the conventions that we're used to for direct proofs with an if-then statement. Similarly, our definition of sets being equal is if we have sets A and B, we say that they're equal if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. If we want to go back and translate that into a more familiar logical proposition, then we can say that A and B are equal sets if for all X we have that X belongs to A if and only if X belongs to B. So really, if we get our mentality correct with proofs involving sets and subsets, then a proof that one set is a subset of another is really just a direct proof like we're used to uh, of an if-then statement. And a proof that has two sets that are equal uh, should really be the same as a standard direct proof where we're doing a biconditional statement. The technique for the proof is going to go something like this. So let's suppose that A and B are sets, and let's write them in set builder notation. So A happens to be the set of all things where proposition P holds of those uh, things X, and B is the set of all things X such that proposition Q holds uh, of all things X. Here's an outline of the steps that we're going to take. We always need to have an assumption, and when we're doing a subset proof, our assumption will be that X is an arbitrary element of the set A. What we'll want to show, then, is that X is also an element of B, and the way that we're going to go about showing this is we're going to show that property Q is true of this element X, uh, because B is the set of all things that satisfy property Q. X would belong to B, by this notation. Now the thing to keep in mind is that one of our important definitions is that P of X is true of X. And so this is really going to be how we paraphrase our assumption that X belongs to the set A. We're going to say, we're going to use that P of X is true of X because X belongs to A. So for this, let's start with an example. Let's suppose that A is the set of all natural numbers that happen to be even. So P of X is X is even. And B is the set of all natural numbers that can be written in this particular form. They can be written as 6S plus 10T, where the numbers S and T are integers. What we want to prove is that the set A is a subset of the set B. Like all direct proofs, we begin by stating our assumptions, and our assumption is that X is an arbitrary element of the set A. What this means is that property P, X is even, is true of the element X. So we can write X as 2K for some K in the integers. Recall, that's what it means for an element to be even. We can write it as 2 times an integer. Now let's state what we want to prove. We will prove that X also belongs to the set B. That is, we will show that we can find integers S and T for which we can write X as 6 times the integer S plus 10 times the integer T. Remember, this is coming from an existence proof. All we need to do is find two integers in the world for which X is 6S plus 10T. We don't know what they are right now, so we use S and T, but later on in the proof we may discover what their value should be, and then we'll say 
s is this value and t is this value, in this case we can write s according to this form. Now here's the key ingredient for this proof, the parts that are always difficult in a direct proof, is to have this insight as to where to go next. And the insight that we need for this problem is, alright, 2 is an even number. In fact, it's the first smallest natural number that is even. And we note that we can write 2 in the form that we want for the set B. That is, we can take 2 and we can write it as 6 times 2 plus 10 times negative 1. 12 minus 10, that does give us 2. This is showing that 2 belongs to the set B because we've found integers A and B, namely A is 2 and B is negative 1, for which we can write 2 as 6 times an integer A plus 10 times the integer B. Now where do we go from here? Let's use substitution. Instead of, let's write 2 in this sort of funny way, let's write 2 as 6 times 2 plus 10 times negative 1, and let's substitute that into the equation x is equal to 2k. And x is equal to 2k, and instead of 2, we're going to write this sort of strange expression for 2, 6 times 2 plus 10 times negative 1, and the very next step that we'll take is we'll distribute the k to each piece of that uh, sum in parentheses. So here's the big parentheses right here, and take the k distribute it to each piece, and what we end up with is 6 times 2k plus 10 times negative 1 times k. And we've just noted at the end of this here, we had a big long string of equalities, and we note that the last equality holds by distributing the k. The very next step is just to regroup terms to make things look more clear. Let's take that 6 times 2 times k and think of it as 6 times the quantity 2k, and instead of negative 1 times k, let's think about that as being the quantity negative k, and we'll write x as 6 times 2k plus 10 times minus k. Now what we've done is we've demonstrated, we've focused the attention on the form in which we've written x. We've written it as 6 times some integer plus 10 times some integer. And in writing x in this way, we found the s and the t we needed from our to prove statement. In particular, s is equal to 2k, it's the integer that I need to multiply by the 6, and t is negative k, that's the integer I need to write multiply by the 10. And if we make that substitution, then we've written x as 6s plus 10t, which is exactly what we wanted. And as x was an arbitrary member of the set A, we've shown that, in fact, every member of the set A can be written in the form it needs to be written to belong to B, and we conclude that x belongs to B. Now I just want to go back, the proof is complete at this point, but I want to go back and say, how did I get that stroke of insight? How did I know that writing 2 as 6 times 2 plus 10 times negative 1 would be helpful? How did I know to observe that? Well, the point is, is that I didn't. I didn't before I started working on the problem. I was given this statement to prove, um, and I wanted to work some examples before I started messing with everything involving letters. So what I did is I did some specific examples. I did two, four, six, did a handful of things before I started the proof to try to gain intuition as to what needed to be done and what values of S and T I should be looking for in the first place. 2 seemed like a perfectly good place to start because I needed to show that an arbitrary positive um, even number belonged to the set B, and 2 is the easiest example of that. 4 and 6 would be the next easiest examples, so those are the examples that I picked. And I just came up with this decomposition by playing around with some things, looking at multiples of 6 and multiples of 10, knowing that I'd have to have a subtraction somewhere and then seeing this pattern. 6 is 12 minus 10, 4 is 24 minus 20, 6 is 36 minus 30, um, and saw that this pattern was holding, and that helped me come up with the idea for what I would need to do in the general case where I just had 2 times k. This is a great way to start a problem. When you're given something and you're asked to prove 
you know, prove something, and you're not at all convinced of it being true. It's not something quite as easy as an odd number plus an odd number is an even number, which we feel is pretty intuitive at this point in time in our lives. A lot of times we're asked to prove things that aren't intuitive, and doing some examples before you really start the proof can help you out a lot. It can help you see patterns, it can help you get some direction and some insight. So I really would recommend it as something to start before you write a proof. The thing that I do want to stress is though, although examples are really great for these things, for seeing patterns, for getting a start on a problem, you can do as many examples as you want and it will not constitute a proof for something like this. The fact that I list it out, ooh, I can see that it's true for 2, 4, and 6. 2, 4, and 6 belong to the set A and they also belong to the set B and you could continue in this way is not really a formal argument that convinces the whole world to you know, the bottom of their being that this is always a true statement. In order to, for this to be a solid, foolproof, um, mathematical proof, we need to have an arbitrary even number. I need to know that this will work for 5,480, not just for 2, 4, and 6. And if all you're going to list for me is 2, 4, and 6, then I don't know that it's true for 5,280. So if you, patterns and examples are great for patterns, they're great for gaining intuition, but they don't ever constitute a proof. In order to do a proof, you do have to go back in and put in all the rigor and introduce the variables um, to handle the arbitrary case. Just as a last closing note, I'd like to say that in fact, I showed that A was a subset of B in my previous example, but it's actually true that B is equal to A, and in order to prove this, I, to prove that these two sets are equal, what I would have to go back now and show, shown that A is a subset of B, I would need to show that B is a subset of A. That is, if I have a positive integer that can be written as 6s plus 10t for integers s and t, then this is in fact an even number. Uh, and that direction, that subset inclusion is actually much easier than the direction we just did, so leave it to you as an exercise.